Hi everyone, welcome to grade 12 math session. Yes, just to make sure you're in the right class, this is grade 12 math and I'm your teacher. My name is Vatsiva, Vatsiva Nkhabani. Okay, so we are having grade 12 Met. We're still doing differential calculus. I think we're going to be on the topic for the next two weeks. <clears throat> okay, so please note down my email address. It's my name, Batseva Nkhabani, so it's B double A T S E B A N K G A B A N E at gmail.com. So Batseva Nkhabani at gmail.com. So, in case if you have questions after the session then you can send me an email okay so please make sure that during the session you're on mute and your videos are off and then we'll have a question and answer session at the end of the lesson so just <clears throat> make sure that you noted down my email so that if you have questions later then you can just send me an email and then also please note down okay. so please note down So please note down the example or exercise number because on the slides I'll specify if it's example one or two or exercise one or two. So just note down so that when you ask me a question, then we know where to go exactly. And then also in the chat, only math related questions in the chat. Please, please only math related up. If someone is talking about something else which is not part of our session, just avoid that. Okay, and I've been receiving emails. I'm glad that you guys are doing work. And yes, yeah, so if you have questions, please send me an email and then I'll try as much as possible to help you. Okay. So in today's session, we're still going to do the derivatives from first principles. So <clears throat> today's our last time doing that. Uh, so we're just gonna go through question paper, like previous question paper problems and see what is required from us. And then we're also gonna do an introduction to rules for differentiation. Remember, even when you're using the limit for first principles, you're still differentiating, but then there's other rules that we are gonna learn about today. So, like I said, this is part of your homework. And I need to attempt this is from a previous question paper. So it's from my 2017 November exam paper. So you are given a function and you were asked to determine f prime. Remember, this means the derivative. So the prime means the derivative from first principles. Because I know a lot of you were asking if you're going to need to use uh, first principles because there's other methods of finding the derivative. Yes you need to know how to use first principle 
to differentiate because you are definitely being tested on that. Okay, so in this case, we have a function which is 2x squared minus x. And we have to find the derivative of that function using first principle. So like we said yesterday, when you, because this is your function, of x, one page, this place with x plus h. So wherever there's x, you replace with x plus h. Okay, can you hear me now? Because someone is saying, okay, great. Okay, so what I was just saying is that when you're using first principles, <clears throat> We usually have to determine f of x plus h. So how you get your f of x plus h is that in the place of x, you just simply replace with x plus h. And then you simplify. Remember I showed you that this is actually So x plus h times x plus h. Okay, so this term, so this term is just simply x plus h multiplied by x plus h in expanded form. So you're simply gonna say x times x, x times h, x times h again, and then h times h, which is h squared. And then when you simplify, you'll get this form. And then again, you multiply your two throughout the terms, and then you'll have a term like this. And then always remember negative times positive, negative. Negative multiply by positive, negative. And guys, if you forgot, for example, <clears throat> Let me go to this. If you forget the notation of your limit, please do this. Don't leave out the question. So write what you know because you will get marks for that. So if you simply just show that, okay, you knew that you had to calculate your f of x plus h, and then after that, you had to find the difference between f of x plus h and f of x, you will get marks for that. So even if you forget the notation, do not panic. Okay, so do not panic if you forget this. So you simply, in the place of x, you replace with x plus h, and then you simplify. You can take this answer and simplify it in the equation, or you do either way. Your steps <coughs> will be de determined by what you want to do. But then I always recommend that you solve f of x plus h separately. 
so that you make sure that your terms are fine before you substitute it into the equation. Okay. Then now when you find the difference between your f of x plus h and your f of x, which you want to plug in here, then that's your answer. And like I said, the first thing you do, the first thing when we solve limits, we apply the substitution rule. So you check, okay, the value that I'm approaching. So your limit h is approaching zero. So you check, okay, if I substitute zero in my equation, what's gonna happen? And you will realize that, okay, if I divide by zero, my function will be undefined. So it means what? I need to simplify. Then you simplify. You make h. If you look at your numerator, you have h as a common factor. So you have h in this term, that one, and that one. So you can make it a common factor. And then check if this is right. So say h times your first term, you check if you get that first term. h times your second term, do you get what you had? This times that, is it equal to that? Then if that's the case, then it means you're fine then you show that you know that this will eliminate and then <clears throat> and then um after that you try to substitute again your limit okay if i substitute zero into this equation what happens so if you substitute zero into this equation then this will fall off. Guys, remember, please note down the, the, so if you have a question with regards to this question, just note down that it's 2017 November exam. And then at the end of the session, we'll come back to this and then I'll answer your question. Is that okay? So just note down, 2017 November exam and then we'll come back to this after this uh, I've done all the problems in the session okay so after eliminating then we remain with it so our f of prime which is our derivative of this function is actually 4x minus 1 okay so we actually trying to avoid division by zero if you look at trying to avoid division by zero so hence we're trying to simplify this equation in a way that when we substitute our value of h which is zero then we won't get an undefined term Yes, so in this step, so in this step, it, it depends on what you want. You can calculate f of x plus h and then substitute it in the general equation and then take your f of x substituted here or you can do it separately it's your choice okay so now we're doing a question from 2018 november exam still almost similar to that other one so we still have to find the derivative from first principles same procedure f prime means derivative remember that f prime even if 
they don't mention, you know that you need to find the derivative first principles, you know you have to have a limit. And then this is your function. And then we go back again in the place of x when we're calculating that. Okay, so in the place of x, we replace with x plus h. So if we're given an equation and it doesn't have x, if we're given a function and it doesn't have x, then we don't plug in x plus h. So our f of x will be the same as f of x plus h. Just remember that. Okay, and then you simplify. And then you show that your f of x plus h minus your f of x also not forgetting the negative so if you actually look at i like to use brackets then i can see which term is which okay <clears throat> so you will see that x squared will eliminate that negative x squared and negative times negative is positive so you have a positive five and a negative five hence you remain with only two x h plus h squared then you go back to your notation because if you look at that this is just the average change and then with a limit approaching zero so you really won't forget how to do this, okay? And then because if we substitute zero in this term, our function will, uh, our term will be undefined. We make h a common factor. And then we eliminate our h. To avoid division by zero, isn't it? Okay. And then our limit as h approaches zero. Now, if we substitute in the place of h, then we remain with 2x. So this are uh, this is how we find the derivative from first principle or how we differentiate using first principle. Okay, and then note this down, it's November exam for 2018. Okay, so just to go over what we've been doing since last week. So, <clears throat> The first thing we did was to check if the limit exists or not. So we checked if the limit exists or not, and then we realized that, okay, the limit exists if the value approaching from the left and the right. So the value of F, remember we are, Looking at this value. So, so the limit as x approaches a certain value. So as x approaches a certain value, what happens to the value of y in that function? So if it approaches the same value, so if it approaches the same value from both sides, so if it approaches the same value from the left and the right, then we say the limit exists. Okay. And then, but then if the limit from the left and the right or from the top and right is different, then we say the limit does not exist. So if the value of y approaching because so, this is simply the value of y. You can think of it as the value of y. So if the value of y we are approaching from the top, but going down or bottom up is different, then we say the limit does not exist. Okay. 
but then in this case it's if it's approaching the same value from both sides then we say the limit exists and then we also calculated the average gradient for example if you have a function we were working with a parabola mm -hmm. This is your x. This is your y. So if you have two points, so if this is your point A and this is your point B, So if you need to find the average gradient, it will be determined by the change in y over change in x. So it will actually be the gradient. It will be the gradient of the line passing through those points. That's how you get the average gradient. This just represents your y2 and your y1. Okay. And then <clears throat> and then we also determine the gradient at a point. So this is the average gradient. And then this one is a gradient at a point. So if let's say you want to find, for example, if you do in physics, you want to find the velocity at a point because it's a chain, then that's how we do. So you could use this and then we also learned that there's different notations for the derivative so you can either get f prime x or y prime and this noting down then this is not a, div um, a division it's just a way of representing your derivative so you can't cancel this d and say you have y over x no so, yeah. And then we learned how to differentiate from first principles using the rule. So today we're just gonna go through other rules for differentiation, just an introduction. So, except for using first principles, which, yeah which is very long and sometimes you might make mistakes with calculations along the way, we have other rules that we can use to differentiate functions. Okay, so the first rule is that if you're given a function in this form, when you find the derivative, it's simply the exponent multiplied by that function and then you subtract one from the exponent so there's two things that you need to remember so it's your exponent and then multiply by your function but then the exponent you subtract one okay but then there's a condition that your n should not be zero why because if your n is zero so imagine if this was x raised to the power of zero we would get what we would get one so if we have x to the power of zero this is equals to one. And therefore, this is a constant. And then this rule will apply. So this rule will apply. Here we say the derivative of a constant is zero. Okay. And then when you do problems, you'll see it's very easy to remember this rule. So we have a derivative of a constant. 
So a derivative of a constant, which is zero. And then another case is if we have a constant, so we have a constant that is multiplied by a function. Okay. So how do you find the derivative of that? This is what you do. So you're actually just finding the derivative of your function because that's what you were doing there. So you find in the derivative of your function and you multiplying it with that constant. Okay. And then we also have the derivative of a sum and the derivative of a difference. So when you do the derivative of a sum and a difference, you're still gonna apply these rules because the derivative of a sum, so you have two functions that you are adding. So you differentiate them separately using rule. Let me name this rule one, two, three, four, five. So you find the derivative of a sum. You're gonna find the derivative of each function applying rule one, two, and three. So you're gonna apply rule one, two, and three to differentiate these separately. The same thing when you have a difference, because the sum, you know, this is how you see if it's a sum, and then this is how you see if it's a difference. But then the whole idea is that you're gonna use rule one, two, and three, depending on which, which one is applying in each function. But then you differentiate the terms separately. Okay. So now let's try to do an example where we apply this rule. So let's try to identify each case. So in the first one, what do we have? We have a constant, which is three. We have a constant, constant. And then we also have a function. Okay. So remember from the previous slide. Which one is it? It's the third rule. So we have a constant and then we have a function. Okay. So if we have a constant and a function, what do we do? We find the derivative of the function. And this is how we do it. So you're gonna find the derivative of your function how do you do that? You say your exponent, this is your exponent. The five is your exponent. So you have your exponent. And then you subtract one from, so five, four is actually five minus one. That's how you got the four and then when you simplify your solution now you can say three multiplied by five and that's 15 x to the power of four okay and then the same thing with the second one we have a constant 
and a function. So we still gonna find the derivative of our function. And then afterwards we can multiply our coefficients. And then we're gonna do the same thing. So this two, we're gonna say two, multiply by our q raised to the power of two minus one. Okay, then this is what we get. So <clears throat> when you find the derivative, we're going to say two, which is this two, and then this is one because it's two minus one, and then we simplify. Okay, and then 60. So if our function is 60, what is this? This is a constant. So the derivative of a constant is simply what? Zero. Okay. For the fourth one, But the fourth example, okay. So this is way easier than using the first principle, but then you can use these rules to check if your from first principle is right. So if you wanna do a quick check in the exam, you can do that. Then now we have a sum. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna find the derivative of this term and also the derivative of that term. So this is gonna be the same thing that we did with the previous ones. You have a constant and x raised to a power. And then this one is raised to the power of one. Remember, this is one. So you're gonna have one minus one which is zero, okay. So again, this is our exponent. And then we say our exponent minus one, which is two. And then this one, it's x raised to the power of zero, which is one. And then when you simplify, that's what you get. Then for a difference, still the same rule, you have a constant multiplied by that. So you're still gonna say four minus one, and then drop down, multiply that answer with four, and then simplify, and the derivative of a constant is zero, and you have zero here. Zero. And then when you simplify this, two into that twice, and then you get six n cubed. Okay, so remember, just when you're doing, when you're writing your exam and you're using first principles, you can just find the derivative using one of the derivative rules. So you can differentiate using one of the derivative rules just to see if your answer is correct or just to see what you are working towards. Okay. So for your homework, this is just something for practice so that you can know if you're, just to practice your limits using first principles. And then this is just to practice your sum and, <clears throat> and the other rules of differentiation. Okay, so 
this is your homework. And then remember, guys, I always use the Siavula textbook. So I use examples and exercises from your Siavula textbook. And then the question papers that we're going to do are from the DBE website. And then also remember to follow us on social media. And then for videos, go to Africa Team Geeks website or YouTube. Okay, so let's try to do questions. We have 11 minutes for questions. Okay, let me just go back to your homework and then check. Remember, please note down your example number. Okay, a question. Okay, there's a question from Nishef Zeni Escaba. Okay. Just gonna unmute you, Zeni. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yes, you had a. Do you still have your question or? Um, ma'am, I think Kyle answered me, ma'am. Okay, okay. But then, if you still need help, then you can just raise your hand, yeah. or you can send me an email. Okay. Okay, someone asked me to explain number five from the example. Okay, these questions are from, so this is from a previous paper and then this is from your textbook, the Siavula textbook. So, or you can use any other textbook to practice really. You don't really have to do the problems that I give. You can do different ones and then maybe you can share them with us on Monday and then we try to attempt them next week. Cause it's good to practice previous papers. Okay, let's go back to the example. Okay, the example. Okay, um, devil. Unmute. Okay, devil. Ma'am? Yes. So, number five, which part don't you understand? I'm kind of lost on like the rules, it's like because I never got number five for your comforts like on those ones and then i don't quite understand them okay remember guys we have rules of let me just go back to the rules let me explain the rules again okay because what she's saying is that she doesn't really understand the procedure you need to let me go back okay let me just go back to the Let me just mute you and then go back, then I'll come back.
Okay. So from the rules, the rules, you just apply them as is, okay? So if you're given a function, which is x raised to a power, how you differentiate that term is by saying your exponent multiplied by the function, and then now the exponent of that function, you subtract one, it's a rule, okay? So you just need to know the rule, and then you apply it for different equations, okay? So then now, if you're given, which is x raised to the power, then your answer would be that power multiplied by x raised to that original power, but then now the exponent you subtract one. Okay. So, and then the second rule, it simply says, if you're finding the derivative of a constant, your answer is zero. So when you differentiate a constant, it's zero. Because remember, even when we were doing an example yesterday, we did a function where we had f of x, which was one over four. And then when we found the derivative of that using first principles, we saw that, oh, when we find the derivative of a constant, it's zero. So if our function is a constant, then the derivative will be zero. But then, if you find the derivative of, <clears throat> of a constant multiplied by a function, you only find the derivative of the function and then you multiply your answer with the constant. Okay, so that's how I was saying, these three rules, you apply them in all the problems. So you just need to know these rules and then you apply them. So whether you get a sum or a difference, because you find the derivative of things individually, then you still apply these rules. For example, let me show you the one where we were doing the limit. Okay. For example, in this case, you had to find Okay, you had to find the derivative of x squared minus five. If you look at your answer, you will realize that, oh, because it's a difference, the derivative of five is actually zero. Hence, there's no five here anymore. And then the derivative of x squared will be x raised to the power of 2 minus 1. And 2 minus 1 is what? Is 1. So your answer, your final answer is actually 2x raised to the power of 1. So that's what I'm saying. When you do the, the limit from first principles to check if your answer is correct, you can just quickly use the rule to see if what you did was correct. Okay. Remember, you need to know all the notations. You need to know all these notations. So if they ask you in a question paper and they have dy dx, you need to identify that, oh, they actually want me to calculate the derivative. Okay, let me admit Luke, Luke. Luke? Yes. Do you understand now? Do you understand the rules? How the rules work? Or you still want to look at them quick again? Oh, okay. Look. Uh, okay, let's go quickly to just then. Uh, 
Yes. Caitlin? Hi. Yes. No, you have a question. Mm -hmm. no I wanted to confirm that is, so that's basically all the ways they can ask us for the derivatives. Yeah, because in the exam, they would just write any of these notations. And then okay. you have to see that, oh, they want me to find the derivative. But usually when they want you to use first principle, they will specify saying, find the derivative using first principle. But then if they don't specify, then you can use all these rules. But then if they specify, then you need to use um, first principles. Hence, it has more marks because then you do more steps. No, what mm -hmm. I was wondering is for notation, mm -hmm. um, those are all the different ways they can put into a question. So if we see, for example, d over dx in brackets f of x, it still means to find the notation. Yes, but remember f but of still x... still means to find the derivative. Uh-huh. But then remember in a test, they wouldn't say f of x. They'll write x squared or 2x squared plus 1. or They will write the actual function then you okay. need to know that, oh, yes, I need to find the derivative. So that's just a different forms they can ask us in? Yes. Oh, okay. So Thank you. If you look at previous papers, you will see that they use different forms, different notations, yes. Okay. Okay, guys, so if you still have questions, remember, just send me an email. So if you have questions regarding today's session, yeah, send me an email. Then we'll meet on Monday, same time at 1.